Just now, I spoke on the phone with President Rouhani of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The very fact that this was the first communication between an American and Iranian president since 1979 underscores the deep mistrust between our countries, but it also indicates the prospect of moving beyond that difficult history. I do believe that there is a basis for a resolution. U.S. President Barack Obama quite excited on Friday that he'd spoken with Iranian President Rouhani. As he said, first time that two leaders from that country had spoken since 1979. Meanwhile, in the House of Representatives, Congressman Poe out of Texas, he was taking a different view of that phone call as House Republicans tried to push for changes to the budget and were told by the White House they weren't interested in negotiating. We were here till nearly 1 a.m. Sunday morning. The Senate was gone. The president, according to the New York Times, played golf over the weekend. So the president will negotiate with the Iranians. The president will negotiate with the Russians about Syria. But the president and the Senate will not talk to the House. Where, oh, where has the Senate gone? Where, oh, where can they be? With time so short and issues so long, where, oh, where has the Senate gone? All right, with the U.S. government showdown, a shutdown looming and talk of negotiation everywhere, let's bring in Alex Marlowe. He's managing editor at Breitbart.com, stationed out of Washington, D.C. And Alex, is, Congressman Poe have a point there that Obama is out there willing to negotiate with the Iranians, but not with House Republicans who are, need I remind you, I don't need to remind you, but they're elected officials. Oh, absolutely. And this is where this is a... a, a a result of the systematic thinking of the American left it starts in the universities here. I'm sure it's similar in uh, Canada as well. But the way leftists are brought up and raised in this country is that we're taught that evils are people who want to take away the wealth, cut back the welfare state or uh, polluters. Those are evils, not actual evils like the Iranian regime. So those evils, we can negotiate with them, but anyone who opposes us politically on domestic issues, they're not. Uh, worth the gum under our shoe. All right. So is uh, uh, the shutdown could happen. Now Obama is saying, well, we're open for negotiating, but not on Obamacare. That's kind of like saying, sure, I, I'm up for paying you a fair price as long as it's my price. Yeah, that's, that's precisely what's happening. But uh, as Mark Halperin said today, who's a, a, a major player here in Washington, journalist, uh, author of the book Game Change, he, he pointed out that it's all because the media in America has Obama's back on the debt ceiling issue. So uh, as so long as Obama knows that the polls are going to get skewed because the American mainstream press is going to get his talking points out there about the horrors of a shutdown and that it's the Republicans' fault, uh, he knows that he's probably going to come out winning in the end. He's, uh, he's going to win um in the world of public opinion, but let's talk about what's actually happening, because all we're hearing about is the horrors of government shutdown, the fact that uh, uh, people will not be able to get in the national parks, you won't be able to use the bathrooms if you're a tourist in D.C. And by the way, let's point out, 17 times since 1976, the U.S. government has shut down uh, without a, a major catastrophe happening. Uh, but so this is happening, and the fight is really over Obamacare. The Republicans are saying... The Republicans in the House are saying, fund the government, but don't fund Obamacare. And the Democrats in the Senate are saying, no, we're not going to go for that. So it is a, it's a gridlock that way, correct? Yeah, it is a gridlock. And so the Republicans are banking on sending a piece of legislation, getting it to the president without funding his signature piece of legislation, the biggest, the centerpiece of his presidency, uh, a continuing resolution, which is, which is the term for the um, bill itself. It's a, and, and they're assuming Obama would sign it without that funding, and that's, it's sort of far-fetched, but the spirit of it is that Americans hate Obamacare. Everything we learn about it is that it's not ready to be implemented. There's technical glitches. People aren't even aware of what is expected of them and what's available to them. It's obviously bloated, and we still don't even know what's in it because well, it's 2,300 pages. And so the principle is, is that's what the Republicans are fighting against. Republicans and Democrats in increasing numbers are hating Obamacare. Maybe it isn't that far-fetched. And I want to come back to the juxtaposition of President Obama willing to negotiate with the Iranian president, but not with elected Republicans in his own country, his own elected opposition. I want to play a clip that uh, President Rouhani gave to Iranian media at home, where he basically said Obama accepted the idea 
that he can have a nuke program. Here it is. The bahsi ke baaye Obama ma dar telefon dochtim umdatan masaleye hastei bud. Man goftam dar un telefon ke masaleye hastei Iran na tanha haq mardom Iran e va na tanha bahse tosei Iran e, balke balatar bahse qurur e meliye melati Iran e. So according to Rouhani, Obama says we acknowledge the rights of the Iranian people to have this program. So what's he negotiating if his, his opening position is one of weakness with the Iranians? Right. Well, Obama said out front, first of all, the, the, the first thing he said in this passage uh, in his address talking about Iran is he says that he's not seeking regime change in Iran. This is something that should have been startling to the American people. Remember, Rouhani, even though he's being billed as a moderate, has 35 years of service to the Ayatollahs. Uh, he was chosen six people out of over 650 candidates. Only six of them were deemed fit to run by the Ayatollahs. So that's the top 1%. This is a man who has said on record that Iran has never tried to enrich uranium. Uh, when, in fact, the International Atomic Energy Association, the IAEA, has confirmed that Iran has done this. So saying that they've never done it is akin to saying... Uh, uh, rabbits don't eat lettuce. That's, yeah. and, and this is the guy that the president thinks is a moderate. Well, he's the guy, he's essentially Iran's version of Baghdad Bob that was put out to lie to the West for years and years about the nuke program, but apparently the, uh, the president figures he's a okay to, uh, to negotiate with. Uh, I don't think it's going to end well on the Iranian negotiating front. Uh, I want your thoughts on where it will end. Uh, 30 seconds left. Where does it end with the, uh, the government shutdown? The bottom line is that the international data that's available to us gives us the sense that Iran is about three quarters of the way to having enough enriched uranium to have a nuclear bomb. Uh, Obama will probably drag this out. I don't see any diplomatic outcome that is going to happen in the near future. And in the meantime, Iran's building about 3,000 more centrifuges, and they are on track to have a nuclear bomb. There's no other way to look at it right now from my vantage point that they are on track at this point, and we're playing chit-chat with a guy who's a slick pack, uh, package representing the Ayatollahs. All right, Alex, great talking as always. We'll chat again soon. All right, check out the blog. Thank you, Mr. Lily. Al.